Look at my bank. I only have 100,000 GP in it right now. What can we get done with 100k? Well, quite a lot thanks to RuneScape's newest boss. I think it'll be really fun to try to rebuild an account using only the new Phantom Muspa drop table, which is one of the best in the game. There's been a lot of debate on how viable it is to kill this boss with lower level gear on mid-level accounts, but I want to actually try it out and see how much money we can make and how far we can upgrade our gear. Okay, so the start is going to be the hardest, 100k. How are we going to kill the Phantom Muspa with 100k? Well, there's only one viable option here, and that is going to be the Rune Crossbow. Now, because the Rune Crossbow is so strong for its price point, we're going to be using the ranged only method for the foreseeable future, actually, quite a while. It's so cost effective, and magic is just not. We'll eventually try to get a magic switch, but for now, I think the rune crossbow is the way to go. Alongside it, we're going to get full black dehyde because it's also quite cheap, and we grabbed ourselves an amulet of glory as well. Now, the next most important piece of equipment after that are our bolts. We're going to grab sapphire bolts, enchanted, and of course, some enchanted ruby bolts. These are going to use up most of the rest of our money. Now, we're also going to pick ourselves up an accumulator for about 1.5k, definitely worth grabbing that. And we're also grab ourselves snakeskin boots because they are dirt cheap. Now with all that spent, we only have 20k left, so we can't really afford any more gear. We have to spend the rest of it on supplies. We're gonna need a ranging potion, a stamina potion. We're gonna go with some karambwans, and we're also gonna need a few prayer potions as well. So yeah, this is the gear that we're going in with. Uh, it's not amazing, and I have no idea how smoothly or unsmoothly this kill will go. I've never attempted a kill in gear this bad before, but let's give it a try. Now, I've been talking about how good this rune crossbow is going to be, but honestly, the thing that's really going to be carrying us here are the bolts. We brought ruby bolts and sapphire bolts. Ruby bolts are, are going to help us just get the bulk of the HP down, and sapphire bolts are going to be for the end of the fight. Now, because my damage is really low, each time one of these bolts proc, it's going to save me so much time. So with a bit of luck, we should be able to get this down in a reasonable amount of time. Now the great thing about this boss is you don't really take that much damage. Oh my god, our bolts just activated three times in a row. Look how much HP that just took off. Okay, so that was definitely pretty lucky, but that illustrates how good these bolts can be. I mean, we're in very basic gear and we're still getting a decent amount of activations and a decent amount of hits. So the method that I'm using to kill the Phantom Muspa is exactly the same as when I use a Twisted Bow. They're pretty much the same. The only difference is, of course, the Twisted Bow kills it way quicker, but I mean, it should. It's a one build weapon. My 10,000 GP crossbow is doing just fine, though. So during the range phase, we simply are praying ranged, and during the melee phase, we're kiting the boss, trying to keep our distance while protecting from melee. Okay, so these bolts have been carrying this kill so hard. Uh, now that it's lower HP, we can switch over to our sapphire bolts. Okay, so we have our sapphire bolts equipped. This is the part that might take a while because we don't really have any special... Oh my god, right off the bat, another bolt activates. So lucky. I feel like this is actually going to be a pretty quick kill, all things considered. Oh, another one. There we go. Well, that phase went by really quickly. Now, the final phase of this boss fight is very simple. The only thing we have to keep in mind is since our DPS is very low, we have to be very mindful on where we are stepping because we don't want to run out of room. The final phase is kind of a DPS check, but you have so much time that it hardly makes a difference. There we go, our very first kill of the Phantom Muspa with bare bones gear. Felt actually pretty quick. Yeah, four minute kill. That's really not that bad. We also got a pretty good first drop as well. We didn't need anything special, but we do need some money to replenish our supplies and hopefully make a couple of gear upgrades. Okay, so how much do we get for our first drop of the Phantom Muspa? It looks like 179k. That's a pretty damn good. Okay, so you may have noticed we are missing a couple slots here. Uh, we don't have a helmet or a shield, uh, so we're going to start off probably by buying one of those. We'll get a black DI'd shield. Actually quite a significant upgrade. And then we'll also go ahead and buy, I suppose, the Archer Helm. Kind of expensive, but I suppose that's what we'll do for now. Okay, I must be getting a little bit lucky here because my bolts are very accurate. And our kill time for this one, uh, not quite as quick, but still not terrible. 4 minutes, 26 seconds. We had a number of bolt activations, but hey, we got a big supply drop. We can probably do another kill. Yeah, 3 minutes, 43 seconds with this gear. I can't even believe it. We're not even using dragon bolts yet. 
Well, okay, this is actually pretty close. Uh, we'll probably just be able to make it with three prayer points to spare. Second try and we got a three kill trip with another four minute kill, not bad. And this inventory is actually looking pretty loaded so we'll be able to make another couple of gear upgrades I would imagine. So we got 10 Renar Seeds, 2000 Ancient Essence, and a couple other miscellaneous drops for an 800k trip. And our supply cost is very low. Now because the trips are actually going very smoothly, I think I might actually just save up for our next weapon. There are some armor upgrades I could make and probably will soon, but by far the biggest upgrade we can get in the near future is going to be the Dragon Crossbow. Not because the crossbow itself is that much better, but mainly because it can fire Dragon Bolts. So we'll be able to buy Dragon Ruby Bolts and Dragon Sapphire Bolts which will do way more damage and we'll still be able to take advantage of their special effect. Oh my god, so tired from running around in circles. I definitely think it's about time for a shave. Well, breaking news, Manscaped now sells beard products, which is the sponsor of today's video. Whoa, no, Whoa, way. no way. Manscaped has just come out with their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. And this thing is actually really awesome. The first thing I really like about it is it can trim to 20 different lengths, all with the exact same guard. All you have to do is scroll the rotary wheel and you're good to go. You don't have to keep like a ton of different guards in your cabinet. And it's really easy and quick to change between different lengths. Every time I've used a beard hedger, I've gotten a really nice precise cut and it also feels really smooth on the skin because it comes with a titanium coated T-blade. As with most Manscaped products, it's also completely waterproof, which is actually way more efficient as you can have shave, shower, and play old school in the shower all at the same time. Now we're gonna at least try. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit comes with a ton of other things as well. It comes with beard shampoo and conditioner, which are specially made products that are specifically for the beard, as something I didn't know is beard hair is actually way easier to damage than the hair on your head, which means you need something more specific. And if you're looking to get a little bit more fancy, it also comes with beard oil and beard balm, which will allow you to get those more exotic looks down. So if you're interested in the Beard Hedger or any other Manscaped products, I would definitely go ahead and check them out. Right now they're even offering 20% off to my viewers and free shipping. All you have to do is use the code 20FLIPPING at checkout when you go to manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com as long as you use the code 20FLIPPING. And thanks once again to Manscaped for supporting the channel and sponsoring the video. Okay, that kill was definitely a bit slower, but 2000 Ancient Essence, oh my god, 200k just on that with single item drop. 4 minutes, 44 seconds, still not terrible, but uh, it felt like maybe a more average kill time. But hey, 335k loot, not bad. Looks like my life for the next couple of days is just going to be running around in circles. Okay, that kill was definitely pretty slow, almost 6 minutes for that one. While the range only method is quite relaxed and can be good, if you get unlucky the kills can go on for quite some time, and this is probably not even the worst we're going to see. Okay, interesting, a spirit seed, uh, not worth much on its own, but we can turn that in for a seed pack, which could have some value to it as well. Ooh, I think that's our personal best, or well, our personal best in this gear. 3 minutes, 35 seconds, we got really lucky with the bolt activations. I think we'll be able to get a sub 3 minute kill for sure once we get the dragon bolts, but again, you'll have like a 3 minute kill and then like a 7 minute kill all within an hour, so it's kind of like a lot of variance, but with a bit of luck, the kills are pretty quick. Okay, so this trip was another 400k in loot and we've actually been saving up a decent amount of money. So we're up to 2.2 mil, which means we can make our first major gear upgrade to the Dragon Crossbow. We bought it for about 2 mil and not only now can we get a, well, slightly stronger crossbow, we can also upgrade to Dragon Bolts, which will increase our DPS by a significant margin. So we're going to buy some Ruby Dragon Bolts E and we're also going to buy some Enchanted Sapphire Bolts. Well, of course, as soon as I switch over this gear, we don't get the cleanest kill, but obviously over time we're going to notice some quicker kill times, overall better DPS, and more money per hour. Okay, I totally forgot about this item here, but we can actually buy the Saradome and Coif, even though it looks kind of dumb. It's just a trade-up upgrade over the Archer Helm, don't even know why I bought that to begin with. And another thing I want to buy here are Enchanted Diamond Dragon Bolts. 
We're going to use this on the very final phase because we don't really want Ruby Bolt activations when it's under 100 HP. So we're going to bring these for the final final phase. Not strictly required, but should still help out. Uh, we're also going to buy some Barrows Gloves as well because, you know, pretty simple upgrade for only 130k or whatever, definitely worth it. Well, there we go. I think that's our quickest kill time yet. 3 minutes, 29 seconds, and I think we'll also be able to go for a 4 kill trip. So I'm definitely noticing a difference. And we could almost go for a 5 kill trip, but uh, nah. It's kind of not worth wasting all the supplies and time. 4 kill trip though is still very good, and oh, another 200k just in essence. You love to see it. So that 4 kill trip was worth 565k. Not bad. Okay, we're gonna make a quick gear upgrade here. Uh, we're actually gonna swap out the Black Dehyde Shield for the Book of Law. We just went ahead and bought the page set on the Grand Exchange. Will give us a similar attack bonus while also giving us a prayer bonus, which will be very helpful. We're not really taking that much damage, but our prayer is draining pretty quickly due to long kills, so I think this could be a decent swap out. So even with the minimal gear upgrading I've done so far, our kills are getting much more consistent. That is another 3 kill trip worth a solid 600k. Oh my god, such a good drop. 3 dragon plate legs on its own 500k just in Alks. Oh my god, that's why this boss is so good. Into a grimy snapdragon drop. Another single roll on the drop table that's worth over 200k on its own. So that was another 3 kill trip, but we got pretty much the best normal common loot you can get. After selling everything off, we got 1.1 mil just from 3 kills. So, god, so good. Bringing our cash stack total up to 2 mil. Well, there's a unique item, at least the frozen cash. Why does this exist again? Oh, there is another ancient icon. We're up to like 6 now or something. I wish you could high alk it. I've tried. It just does not work. Hey, there we go, our first sub 3 minute kill with this gear setup. I knew it was going to happen eventually, you just can get really lucky with the bolt activations. But there's a kill time of 2 minutes 57 seconds. So after that trip, we have stacked up over 3 mil in cash and we're going to make another pretty significant gear upgrade. We're going to buy the Odium Ward. I think this is the best option for me right now. It's actually incredibly strong after the rework a couple years ago. It gives a range strength bonus, which is kind of hard to come by, and even more ranged attack bonus. It's a really strong item. We can always sell it later if we need to, but I think this is a better choice than going for like a Fury, which doesn't really do much for us at all, or even the Archer's Ring, which is more expensive and will provide us with even less benefit, I think. We'll get it eventually, but for now, I think this is probably the best option. Well, we just beat our personal best just like that. 2 minutes, 53 seconds, incredibly quick. Again, pretty lucky, I don't expect this every time, but the kill times are definitely getting quicker. Okay, so I thought I'd just do a quick check-in on our current bank value. After putting everything of value in, 8.3 mil. Okay, so one thing I forgot to buy, the God Dehyde top and bottom. They're a lot cheaper than I thought, but they're not going to be a significant upgrade, but we're going to get a little prayer bonus from that which should help in the long run, and uh, it's just nice to be color matching for once. And this is the current gear. I could use a ring still, and of course the anguish would be nice, but they're both kind of expensive. So even though our gear is so much better now, you still will get the odd really slow kill, like this one was 5 minutes 16 seconds. Kind of a pain, but there's really not much you can do, because sometimes you do miss on the melee phase a lot. And that's kind of where maybe bringing a mage switch becomes a lot more appealing. The only issue is that to use mage effectively, you do need a kind of decent setup. We probably need at least a rims and a toxic trident and a cult, which to be fair aren't terribly expensive, but we only have 2.8 mil right now so we can't really afford it anyway. Alright, so after our last trip, we are now up to a 4.6 mil bank, and now is kind of where I'm considering maybe starting to invest a bit into magic. There aren't really any cheaper ranged upgrades anyway, so we're going to try out the Trident of the Seas. I'm not sold on this. We'll probably have to upgrade to the Toxic Trident pretty soon. Uh, we're going to buy the Occult Necklace, and we're also going to buy Mystic Robe, so it's not the best switch. 
And we'll probably go for Book of Darkness as well. So definitely not the best switch, but I'm kind of curious to try it out. It would have to be a good amount better because you do have to gear switch a lot, which will bring this from a pretty chill boss to something you're constantly switching gear for. Now another item I'm very curious in trying is the new Forgotten Brew that actually came out with the boss. We obviously can't afford a Imbued Heart, but this should work as a decent alternative. So this is our mage switch, not looking so hot, but the Forgotten Brew will hopefully boost our magic up enough. Okay, so here's the first attempt with the gear switch. Okay, we probably should be praying Augury as well because the magic accuracy will probably make a difference against this boss. So using magic on this melee phase is certainly more accurate, but it's kind of hard to quantify how effective getting like a lucky bolt proc is because sometimes it'll switch into the melee phase and you'll immediately ruby bolt proc it and it'll switch right back. So that saves so much time. You don't have to gear switch for it either. Okay, so first attempt didn't go too poorly. A three minute 41 kill, you know, not terrible, but also not notably quicker either. Another issue that's kind of coming up with the mage switch is it takes up a lot of inventory spaces. So much so that I don't even think I can do a third kill this trip, which is a bit of a bummer because it does take a while to get back here. I'm not sure if you could get away with less than a six item switch and still have it be effective, but yeah, it takes up a lot of spaces. Okay, so with this final inventory, I think we're gonna have enough money finally for the toxic trident. I don't even know really why I tried it with the trident of the sea, it's not worth it, but let's try the upgraded variant. This will do more damage and more importantly, be more accurate. Okay, so I've done around 10 kills with the Mage Switch, and I gotta say, I don't think it's worth it. Even with the Toxic Trident, if you do your switches perfectly and miss no hits, it might be a bit quicker, but you still get less kills per trip, and I think the time spent running back and re-gearing makes it so I don't think it's actually worth this at all. We're gonna keep it for now, maybe once we get a Rims more accurate, it could be more worth it, but I still think the range-only method is still best when you're working with a low budget. There we are, a Venator Shard on kill 375. I'm so excited about that. Pretty lucky for the video, but overall kill count, uh, not so much. But that will be a really nice boost to our cash stack right now. I have honestly no idea how much these are going for. But, uh, well, first we gotta go for the back-to-back, -back, of course. Oh my god, well, that's a good drop, but uh, not another Venator Shard, so let's go ahead and sell it. So it was a 900k trip, but of course we have the Venator Shard, which I think should go for at least 6 mil. Yes, it does. Went for over 7 mil actually, so these actually have gone up a little bit since I last sold one. And that has rocketed our cash stack up to nearly 10 mil. And the next logical gear upgrade is going to be the Archer Ring. Uh, we may end up selling it back in the future because it's not strictly required and we might want to get like a Necklace of Anguish or even maybe a Twisted Buckler. But for now we'll go ahead and buy the Archer's Ring for 4.5 mil nearly, pretty expensive. And that will make us even more accurate. Okay, so we've been grinding away here. We're back up to a 7 mil cash tag right now. But one thing I think we should definitely start using now that we have a lot of money to work with are thralls. I was considering buying uh, the room pouch note so we could have a room pouch, but I don't think it's that necessary. Normally I'm getting about three kill trips with a bit of food left over. So sure, maybe we could go for a four kill trip on average, but I think we're just gonna sack the inventory space for now and start using greater thralls. Now because the kill times take quite a while, we're gonna get a lot of value out of these thralls. I mean, we're gonna have to resummon them like three times or even four times sometimes. So they're gonna do quite a bit of damage over the course of a kill. So I've been running the numbers here and I think we actually have enough money to make a bigger upgrade here if we sell a few things. So we're gonna sell back the trident. We don't really need that anymore. We're getting about four mil from all of that. We're gonna withdraw our cash stack. That brings us up to 11 mil. We're gonna sell back our archer's ring and if we dump our Odium Ward as well, that will bring us up to 18 mil, which is enough to buy the Twisted Buckler. Now you might be wondering why I'm not upgrading, you know, to an Anguish, but the Twisted Buckler is really good. It gives plus 10 range strength and plus 18 ranged attack. It's actually a stronger upgrade than getting the Anguish right now. Plus we need something to go in that slot anyway. So now we have the Twisted Buckler. So there is our 400th kill to Phantom Muswa, which means we've done about 100 kills in this video. A really good drop as well. 100 kills and one Venator Shard, so we're pretty much right on drop rate. Hopefully though, we can get another. 
Okay, so I've done another dozen kills or so, and we now have enough money to buy back our archer's ring, which again, we may resell in the future if we need to buy another upgrade, but that will do for now. Okay, that was a really, really quick kill. Um, two minutes, 18 seconds. Yeah, that was incredibly quick for a crossbow only kill. We got so lucky with the ruby bolts, it's insane. I don't know if we're gonna beat that. That's just, wow. Oh man, they nerfed the dragon plate leg drop. There's only two of them now. What the hell, Jagex? Only a 600k normal loot. What are you doing? It used to be 750k. Well, it's time once again to sell our Archer's Ring back to the Grand Exchange. We're losing a fair bit in taxes to this, but that's okay. But that is more than worth it because finally we're able to upgrade our last major item and that is going to be by purchasing a Necklace of Anguish. Okay, there we go. We bought one for 16.2 mil and that is going to be the final upgrade we can feasibly get here before we have to go for some major, major items. Like after this, the next biggest upgrade, I guess you could get the Armadillo Crossbow. But that's still pretty minor. The bow fair denim would be very strong, but that's very expensive. So this is kind of just as far as you could go. I mean, I could buy Kirill's, but that's not really going to make much of a difference here. You don't really take that much damage. Of course, we need the archer's ring back, but for all intents and purposes, I think we've rebuilt this account quite nicely. We started with 100k in a rune crossbow, and after putting everything in the price checker, we are up to 33.8 mil. In total, we killed the Phantom Muspa 156 times, which means our average loot per kill was about 215,000, so very, very high. With the crossbow tech, we were getting about 10 kills per hour, which means we're getting somewhere between 2 and 2.5 mil per hour with this gear, which is not good. We started with a rune crossbow and regular sapphire bolts, so you know, there's room for improvement here. I had a ton of fun doing this, and I would definitely recommend anyone who is looking to rebuild their account Getting Secrets of the North done is a very good way to do so. The boss can be killed with budget gear, it is possible, and the better gear you get, the more money you're going to make per hour. And there's no doubt that currently the Phantom Muspa is the best consistent money making method in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now quickly before I go here, I just want to thank all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Aliandra, Prophet of the Boosh, Mitch Rinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. Also a giant thank you to YoYoSup89 and NDM0001 for subscribing at the Runite Tier. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.